welcome back to the studio. Today I'm going to be putting together the five central blocks of our block of the month pattern that we're working on. And I want to urge you to slow down and pull out the paper patterns at this point and make sure we have all of the blocks in the right position in the right orientation. I've been quilting for a long time so I always think I know what I'm doing. That's when I make my big mistakes. I pulled out my fabric blocks and I laid them down looking at my overall pattern trying to figure out how they went together. <clears throat> As I was laying them out none of it was making sense. I thought I had used the wrong flower on the wrong size block. I couldn't figure out the orientation and I thought I had done a huge blunder and I was going to get ready to put it together some way I thought it went which would have been bad. So I pulled out my paper patterns and I laid each block on the paper pattern and I could see that I had done each block right and then I used the master planogram and laid out the blocks and lo and behold I hadn't made any mistakes. I was just trying to put them together too wrong, too fast the wrong way. So I would really urge you to pull these papers out. Basically what we have are two rows. We have the birdhouse that's going to go over top of the hibiscus. That's going to create one row on the right hand side. And then we have these three flower blocks. They're going to get sewn one on top of the other. That creates the left hand side. And then we'll just join those two seams. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and sew these together uh, in the right way and then we'll come back and we'll do a little bit of pressing before we put on our applique pieces for the last step. Well there's no great mystery here. I'm just going to be sewing straight seams of the first two blocks, the long birdhouse and the hibiscus. I did pin these just to make sure I had them in the right orientation but before I get to the actual sewing machine I'm going to do a little bit better job pinning them so that the edges meet up nicely. So now we have the first row done. That one only had two blocks. I'll go ahead and press that open and then I'm going to go ahead and get the next row done. I already have the top and bottom block press or uh, pinned on there. So then we'll just have the two rows. So we have uh, two rows now. We have the left and the right row. Our flowers are in the proper orientation. Some of my blocks were just a slight bit of different sizes. So after I had the two seams in them, I went ahead and leveled these off, which isn't going to make any difference to the final piece. Uh, this particular row, I didn't have to do that on. The only thing that you want to do is where the birdhouse matches the hibiscus. I went ahead and ironed that seam down and on the bottom row here I iron this one up so that when I flip these two over those two seams are the only ones that will meet uh, from the previously sewn blocks so those will nest together. So that will be where I start pinning at that intersection and then I'll pin up and down and go ahead and uh, sew this last seam together for the center unit and then we can get that pressed. Once we finished we could press it to either side it won't matter. I generally do not press open seams for something like this because there would be no reason there isn't really that much bulk there and we don't want any chance of the batting coming through. So I'm going to go ahead and pin these and get them sewn and then we'll move on to the fusing. So I have my pieces pinned together. The only point that I matched was uh, two seams at the bottom and those were nested together. By nesting I just mean that in the back one seam allowance was pressed up and the other one was pressed down. So when you put them together they nest together really beautifully and create a smooth seam. So I put my pins in and now I'm just going to run a quick seam straight down the middle. And that's it for the sewing today. I have to pick out the inner border for this. 
uh, but I'm not sure which I'm going to use. If I was basing it just on the background fabric, then I would use blue because that was to be the complementary color. But I may use a fuchsia color to pick up some of the uh, flowers in the applique. So you'll have to wait and see on the next video which one I chose. This large seam in the middle doesn't really matter which way I go on that because it's not going to be lining up against anything. And I'm going to have to move my piece down because my cord is only so long. Usually after I press it from the back, I will also press it from the front just to make sure there aren't any little accordion pleats there in that seam. So that's pretty much it as far as piecing. Very, very simple piecing on this. Now what I need to do is go back and fill in some of the applique components that were meant to overlap the seams. So I'll have to pull those pieces together and get the pattern out and my light box and we'll get that all set up and I'll show you how I did that. This area here where these three blocks uh, intersect is where the dragonfly glows and I saved all of my components for the dragonfly in the month we were doing that so I'm just going to lightly put these in place make sure that I have all of my pieces and it looks like I still do so now I'm just going to go ahead and peel the paper backing off the way we have for all of the other pieces and get these tapped into place. I'm not going to fuse these until I get the other section. I also have one of the birds to put down and once I get both of these items in place then I can go ahead and get my fusing mat out, my Teflon pressing sheet, and get that these pieces pressed into place. But just the heat of my hand is enough, and the tackiness of the Steam Seam 2 is enough to hold these pieces in place until they get fused. The only tricky ones really is this material I think it's ultra suede but I'm not really sure these little tiny eyes and antennas these take a little bit more for the heat to get through also to hold them in place and I will just use a black micron pigma pen to do that line between the antenna and the head you could just do stitching on the machine. You could do embroidery stitching, but I don't think anyone's going to be doing hand stitching on a project that goes together this quickly. So that's how quick these components go. I will reposition the top and I will put the new uh, paper in the back that shows the pattern for the bird and I have my bird components here so we'll do that next. This is the last piece that we have to put on. It's one of the hummingbirds. So I'm going to go ahead and get out those components that I saved. And again, I just want to roughly put these pieces into place so I know what I'm doing. A little white eyeball.
Okay, so I have everything I need, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start peeling these pieces off one by one and get this last remaining section done. You really wanna make sure you get a little nice little press there when you have a seam, because we don't want anything to pucker in the back. I'm going to save the eye for last so I can lift up the pattern and see where it is placed. After I get these last three pieces on, then I can go ahead and move aside the light box and then we can get these fused. And then you won't see this again until I have the inner border put on it. Then we'll go ahead and put our outer borders and get the last bit of the uh, applique done for Hummingbird Garden. So, maybe one month, maybe two. Probably be two, maybe be three. We have to include a day for quilting too. So we have all the pieces in place now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my iron heated back up, move the light box, get out my pressing sheet, and just like that, we'll be finished. Well, we have the last two pieces. We have our dragonfly here and our hummingbird here. I've got my Micron Pigma pen at the ready. What I'm going to do is just apply a little bit of mist to the top. That's going to create the steam seam component, uh, the steam for the steam seam. And I'm going to go ahead and place my iron on top. I use the Teflon pressing sheet for several reasons. Uh, it protects any adhesive from transferring from the edges of the applique to the sole plate of the iron, so it keeps my iron clean. It prevents the edge of the iron from crinkling up the applique shapes if you inadvertently slide the iron instead of lifting it up. It protects the background from scorching, and I just like it. So you do have to give the heat of the iron some time to work its way through the Teflon pressing sheet, through the applique and to the background. Uh, a lot of times people don't leave the iron on long enough and they're worried about the steam of seam 2 just evaporating, but that's not possible. Um, usually we underfuse. If you fuse properly at this stage, uh, the product is permanent even washable. You don't have to top stitch the edges. You can if you want to. We do not. We just quilt over it. So I'm just going to let the iron sit there. The heat of your iron is going to depend on how long you keep the iron there. I also sometimes will keep a little weight just to get that really pressed down onto the background and that's pretty much it as far as the fusible component. We do often get people asking us, even though I say it all the time, do I have to top stitch the edge? No, you do not. This is washable. You could put it in the dryer. As long as you fuse properly from the beginning, it doesn't have to be top stitched. Something like this is going to be a wall hanging uh, for us, so it's certainly not going to get a lot of wear and tear anyway. 
and that's all there is to that as far as my little antenna I'm just going to use my Micron Pigma pen this is a 01 and I'm just going to make a little line there and that's all there is to that Micron pigment pen is already permanent on fabric but I'm just doing a little bit of a heat set and there you have the middle portion of our block of the month that's all five blocks finished now so I'll go ahead and put the inner border on it and in the next videos we'll be working on the two outer border designs so thanks for stopping by the studio today we'll see you again next time